Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. People love big, bold red wines. So if I asked you to name a few of your favorites, what would you list? Maybe a Cabernet from California, a Malbec from Argentina, something from Bordeaux. But can you think of any bold reds from Italy? Hey, don't worry, I can help with that. Let me show you four from the boot. Let's travel north to south to taste how Italy does grande gusto, big flavor. <laughs> Valpolicella is a red wine from the Veneto region of northeastern Italy. And the Veneto is home to Verona and, yes, Venice. And Valpolicella wines are typically made of three regional grapes, Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. The most famous Valpolicella wine is probably Amarone, which is a strongly tannic wine crafted from partially dried grapes. A Ripasso is slightly different than an Amarone. It's not made from dried grapes, but it does actually get some of its flavor and its power from them. The wine is actually steeped in used Amarone grapes to extract flavor from them, almost like a strong tea. This process is known as repassing or Ripasso. Corvina is well known for having a sour cherry flavor. To me, it's coming off more like tart cranberry, and there's sort of a candied fruit flavor in there, like red licorice. There's a slight smokiness, and it's got a real peppery spirit. It's silky and warm, and it leaves you feeling good inside. Merlot is a French grape, but it's no surprise we'd find it just a short trip south in Italy. Although Tuscany is best known for Chianti, in the 1970s, a group of rebellious Tuscan winemakers started to experiment with French grapes and French-style wines, and the trend took off. Cortona is a relatively new denomination on the outskirts of Tuscany. It was once a part of the Medici Empire. Okay, swirl, sniff, and taste. You know the drill. It's a very unique Merlot. I'd say it's more vegetal than fruity, and it's perfumed and heady with this interesting scent of curry flower. There's a floral white pepper element in here, and the finish is pretty woody for barrel aging. So let's journey further south to the shin of the boot. The place is Campania. This region was where ancient Rome's best wine was once made. Naples, which is the birthplace of pizza, is the capital here. And Vesuvius is still an active volcano and it looms over the region. Alianico is the main grape here and it thrives in Campania's volcanic soils. You'll often find vineyards planted on the slopes of the mountains to help cool the vines from the hot Mediterranean sun. Alianico produces bold, velvety red wines that are said to have powerful plum and chocolate notes. This wine here is actually made from three local grapes, uh, Alianico being the predominant, uh, another one called Piedroso, and one I've never heard of before called Shashinoso. Wow, this red blend has an intense bouquet of baked red fruit and this sort of uh, musky wild honey essence to it. It's round, full, and juicy, like a canned cranberry sauce with strong vanilla on the finish. So let's end our tasting journey at the heel of Italy's boot in the region known as Puglia. In Puglia, Negro Amaro is the highest quality local grape. The name translates to black bitter, which describes the dark berry and the deep tannic wines that it makes. Now this wine is made around the town of Serignolo, home to those tasty olives of the same name. And grape vines and olive trees are often seen together in Italian culture. So the word sweet comes to mind here. Sweet cherry, uh, white sugar, which is interesting, perfumed roses and vanilla. It's uh, really supple and bursting with fruit flavors. The finish has some beautiful vanilla and cinnamon spice notes on it. Now we're currently heading into the cooler autumn season and we're gonna start to see more hearty foods on the table. So let's talk about some food pairings that are gonna match the power of these wines. Pastisada is a rich stew from the north of Italy. Its key ingredient is cinnamon and when used sparingly is gonna really light up the pepper and cherry in the Valpolicella. Rosemary and garlic are a huge feature of Tuscan food. And I think a Tuscan-style leg of lamb will be complemented by that unique curry-like savory note in this Merlot. The wedding in Italian wedding soup actually describes the marriage of meat and greens in the dish, and it originates in Campania. Pairing with Alianico has been traditional for centuries, so this one's a no-brainer. In the poorer parts of southern Italy, farming is a way of life. Vegetables are on every table, and they pair seamlessly with the local wines. Italian stuffed eggplant will be a natural with Negro Amaro. I love breaking down complicated topics and making them more palatable. And hopefully this weekly tasting did just that for these bold Italian reds. A little information, some guidance, and of course, quite a few tastes can go a long way. So if you love what you tried here, be sure to add these to your list of go-to wines. They're always gonna be reliable to deliver molto gusto. On behalf of Wine Still Sold Out, I'm Mark Supsic. Thanks for tasting with me today. Cheers.